Do you know the symptoms of disturbed sleep? These symptoms are often dismissed in daily life. They are blamed on a heavy workload and stress, little sleep, and negative environmental impacts such as high noise emissions, temperature, or irregular sleep patterns. This lack of recuperation during sleep is a warning of sleeping disorders, sleep disordered breathing, and sleep apneas, shortness of breath during the night. If these disorders persist over longer periods of time, there is a need for education in order to regain vitality. A step-by-step -step diagnostic approach starts with all clinical and laboratory tests. If the reasons for the persistent daytime sleepiness, the reduced performance, the lack of concentration, headaches, and disorders of getting to and maintaining sleep cannot be found, then a referral to a lung specialist, ENT specialist, or neurologist must be made in order to diagnose sleep apnea by carrying out a home respiratory polygraph. This is called a little sleep lab, which entails the outpatient recording the nocturnal sleep patterns at home. A portable device will facilitate the recording of the physiological data such as the abdominal and thoracic effort, the heart rate, the body position, the nasal flow, and snoring. First of all, the patient will pull on the chest belt with the device situated over the upper chest. And then he will pull on the abdomen belt, which should be tightened properly for analyzing the abdominal movements correctly. This registration of the respiratory efforts is needed for the classification of the sleep apneas. The next step is to attach the pulse oximeter in the device and place the index finger in the sensor with the fingernail facing upwards. It measures the patient's oxygenation and pulse rate during the night. The last task involves taking the nasal cannulas, which measure the airflow and the snoring. This should be placed in the nose, looped over each ear, and tied under the chin, adjusting accordingly. This device also measures the body position for detecting sleep disordered breathing caused by the body position. Now the patient is ready for night. There is no need for panic. The measurement does not hurt. The device is worn over clothing and the patient can sleep as he normally does. If there is slippage of the nasal cannula, it should be corrected. It will be no problem because the measurement works throughout the whole night. The next morning, the device should be returned to the clinician for the analysis and for detecting potential desaturations and apneas. Using this method, it can be ascertained whether the apneas are the reasons for the symptoms. The patient is also given a polygraph report in which any possible apneas, as well as the oxygenation during the night, are highlighted. 